Hey there. In this video, I wanna talk about how I use screencasts to communicate with my team, assign tasks to my team, explain complex topics to my team, even communicate with like customers and clients and other people really quickly and easily in a very detailed and in a very rich way. And a lot of people don't use screencasts because um, they can't figure out a way to make it easy for them to basically do. Either there are some tools out there that are pretty annoying, require ages to upload and wait before you get your link and you can copy it and send it. And I kind of found these to be really intrusive. So I basically developed a system of using free tools. I guess it depends on your volume, but Google Drive and Zapier are both tools that you pay for. Zapier you'd pay for depending on your volume or to be paying for Google Drive if you have Google Apps or Google Work or whatever. But basically pretty cheap tools that you might already be paying for. And in a way that makes communicating with screencasts really efficient and low friction. So let's get into it. So the first thing is actually recording the screencasts. And the tool that I use for this is QuickTime. It's built into your Mac. If you don't use a Mac, then I would suggest finding a tool on Windows that you can record a screencast in a reasonably shared format. So for example, Jing, last time I checked, which is a tool by Camtasia, it records screencasts in Flash, which is being discontinued in Chrome and doesn't work on an iPhone. So it's like a really annoying format to use. But if you can find a tool that basically lets you record and doesn't require you to essentially render and export the video, so it allows you to save it really quickly, then I'd go with that. But QuickTime is really cool. It saves into Mov, it's free, it comes with Mac. And so basically you just open QuickTime, you go file, new screen recording, it pops up with this little thing here. You can see that, you know, if your audio is working, you can choose which microphone you want to use and you can choose the screen area. So I can click this and then I can drag and select the screen area, start recording. And then just up here in the top bar, which I'm actually uh, just up here, you click to stop. It's got your video there. You can save it and it will just save into a folder at full resolution. But depending on your screen size, if you're recording on like a retina or something, it can be pretty big. But what you can do, if you want it to be smaller or you have slower internet or something, then you can actually reduce the resolution here. This takes a little bit longer to save if you want to export it into a lower format, but it's still pretty fast relative to some of the other tools like Camtasia. And so, you know, exporting into a 480 or a 720 is going to make the file a lot smaller and take less space on your Google Drive and be faster to upload. So you can do that too if you want. Depending on if it's a more than a 10 minute video, I'll do that, but generally I'll just save it. And then what I have here is I have like a folder in Google Drive. It's also, I have it here in my favorites so I can easily jump to it. And it has like a set of different folders in here. And I'll explain like why I have different folders. But basically what happens is I can save it into one of these folders for one of my team members that's going to automatically create a task for them in Trello with a link to the video. Or I can save it into this one, which is the public screencast folder. And that's going to automatically email me a link of the video. So why don't we try saving it into both? So let's say I save it into Ben and I say... You know, test, test video one. See, that's saved in like one second. All I have to do is save it to the folder task Ben, and then it automatically creates a task in his Trello, which is also integrated with our Slack channel. And so he'll get a Slack message to telling him about that new task that was created. So for me, my workflow is literally like three seconds longer than the time it takes to actually record and send the message or video that I'm trying to send. It's like open, QuickTime, hit record, start talking, hit save in the folder, and it automatically creates that. So as you can see, just a minute later, the video has been added to Trello, and I can go and I can open the card here. It's been added to Trello, and it's automatically come up as a message in Ben's Slack channel. So he'll get notified about that video. He can go in, he can click on it, he can watch the video directly in Google Drive so there's no need to download the video. It plays on all devices. Record it and then just and up here in the top bar, which I'm actually yeah, it's just up here. Super easy, super fast for me. The workflow is nothing. So I'm gonna quickly show you how I go about setting this up. The other one that I have set up is 
the public channel or the public screencast folder. And what that does is that actually just emails me a link of the video. So for example, if I want to make a video for somebody who is not somebody that I assign tasks to on a regular basis, not somebody in my team, if it's a client, a customer or somebody else that I don't communicate with that frequently, I can just save the video into the public screencast folder. And then when that video is finished uploading, it's going to email me a link that I can just copy and paste or forward the email to somebody else. So I can easily share the video that way as well. It also stays kind of as an email in my inbox. So I get reminded that I actually have to process it instead of like it being a link up here somewhere that kind of gets lost. And I have to set a reminder myself to remember to go and actually find that video once it's uploaded and send the link to whoever needed to get to receive that screencast, right? So the way that I do this is using Zapier. Uh, and if you don't know what Zapier is, you can check out our blog. We have a great ebook that we wrote on uh, explaining Zapier and giving a bunch of case studies, et cetera. So you should be able to find that link somewhere around the video or else just type Zapier ebook process treat into Google. Zapier is basically a way that you can connect different apps together to automate tasks um, and move data between different apps. And so the one that I'm looking at here is a Zap that in, in its simplest form, when a new file is added to a folder in Google Drive, it automatically creates a card on Trello. And you can basically set that, pick which folder it is. So I can say, I want it to be the task Ben folder. And then I can create a card and I can select which board and the card gets created in, et cetera. For the integration to Slack, I'm actually using the default Slack integration with Trello that notifies when a new card or a new comment is created in Trello and sends that to Slack. That one's pretty easy to set up. You can just find the Trello app in the Slack app directory. And to set up the Zap for the public folder, all I have is a Zap here that says when there's a new file in a folder, pick the folder, you know, public task or public screencast, automatically send an outbound email to my email address. Now, a couple of other things to note that what you can do on this one for the public screencast folder, I can just make this folder public for anybody who has the link to view. So as soon as I save a video in that folder is accessible to anybody who has the link. So I don't have to go and share it later on. And then with, with the folders for specific team members, I can just share those folders with those team members so they can get access to those videos as they get shared with them. And that's it. It's not that difficult to set up, but really the workflow and the ability to just communicate everything with screencasts change so much because you're able to just convey really complex topics every time, you know, I need to read a blog post or I'm checking out a new feature or I'm reviewing anybody's work of any kind, or I have a new idea, or I'm reporting a bug, or anything like that. I just record a screencast. It's faster, It's then I don't have to wait for the other person to make sure they're there and available to like answer the phone or answer the video call. It's better because they can actually review that message over and over again. And it, when it gets saved as a Trello card, it creates a actionable, trackable task for people to work on and make sure that they actually watched it, acted on it, and if anything that needed to get done needs to get approved, uh, went through that approval flow. So if you're thinking about using screencasts or you like screencasts, but they've just been annoying for you, I hope this video and workflow helps you optimize that process. Thanks. Music